HP have been around for a long time now and they know laptops very well. Now to be honest with you, they're my family's go-to brand. Both myself and my father own one for work purposes and have never had any kind of issue with them. So going into this, I'm really already a fan. Today though, HP has asked us to take a look at their new two-in-one offerings or convertible as they're being branded as online. It's the HP ProBook X360 435 powered by AMD. And first impressions, it's a tidy setup for sure. Inside the model that was sent to us, we found an AMD Ryzen 7 4700U APU clocked at 2 GHz with a max boost clock of 4.1 GHz and backed up by 16 GB of RAM at 32 MHz. This here would typically be known as the top speed model because according to HP's customer support website, we can see that you have the choice of lesser CPUs if budgets couldn't stretch as far. The lowest is an AMD Ryzen 3 4300 APU at a 2.7 GHz base clock up to 3.7 GHz max boots clock. Running a benchmark on PC Mark 10 rendered a score of 3002, which is perfect for those wanting to use this machine for work and educational purposes, and especially has decent scores when it comes to webcam video conferencing and web browsing. We also ran the Night Raid benchmark on 3D Mark 10, as it's really the best for PCs with integrated graphics like we have here with the HP ProBook, and it gave us a score of 9083, with a 35.79 FPS average FPS during the first graphics test and 53.09 average FPS on the second graphics test. Storage is also limited, but thankfully it uses an M.2 SSD. Ours has 512 gigabytes of storage space, but they do come as small as 128 gigabytes. If I were you though, I would try going for the higher storage options because in this day and age, 128 gigabytes on a Windows based laptop is not going to last too long, especially if you're going to be storing high res video files. The battery life is also pretty impressive. Inside is a three cell 45 watt lithium battery, which can give users up to uh, 17 hours worth of work time. Now, of course, take this with a pinch of salt because if you're going to be pounding Netflix all day, then it's not going to last as long as that. The entire case has been coated in aluminium and has a matte silver finish. The HP logo on top is mirrored and everything just really feels extremely solid. Even when opening the laptop, there is no bend or flex on the screen and the bounce on the hinges is also kept to a minimum too. Now this is important as a two-in-one system as chances are you're going to be twisting the screen back on itself more often than not to use the laptop in its tablet mode, which turns Windows uh, really just turns window touch screen friendly. There is however a very small amount of movement if you were to press down on the HP logo area but this didn't feel as if it would be a problem. Its weight comes in at 1.4 kilograms so it's not exactly lightweight but it isn't a problem if you're going to be carrying it around on your back. At its widest point the HP Pro Book measures at just under 18 millimeters. On the bottom are two rubber feet that span the entire width of the base ensuring the laptop stays very much in place when you're typing and shuffling the mouse around using the trackpad. In the center is a grill which helps with airflow and seeing as the laptop raised with the rubber feet cooling isn't too bad either when running the laptop through our benchmarks especially when we threw Cinebench at it its max temperature on the CPU hit 89 degrees which is a little toasty but nothing unexpected out of the realms of a laptop at idle we were looking at around 40 degrees Cinebench also threw back a score of 1080 CB on the CPU benchmark and 49 FPS on the OpenGL benchmark. What was super surprising as well was how quiet the laptop was when it was under load. I didn't notice a fan noise and could only really pick it up in the quietest of environments. If you're in an office or working with the radio on or Netflix in the background, you're not going to be hearing a fan. So down the left-hand side, you can find a Kensington lock port and a single USB 3.1 Gen 1 port. On the right-hand side, it opens up a little bit more with your charging port, a super speed USB Type-C port with 10 gigabit per second signaling rate, USB power delivery and display port compatibility. There is also an HDMI 1.4B and a headphone slash microphone combi jack. There's also a slot for a micro SD card, which supports SD, SDHC and SDXC. Opening up the laptop and you can see a relatively plain looking setup with an all black keyboard which feels like it uses membrane keys. It's a pretty decent typing experience although the travel distance of each key leaves much to be desired. It's fully backlit too which is a massive bonus as I love a backlit keyboard especially as my eyesight is beginning to 
suffer somewhat. Glasses wearer over here and all of that. The trackpad is also smooth but grippy enough to exercise accurate tracking. What is unique here though is the fingerprint reader which can be found on the bottom right. Fingerprint reader itself was very accurate and unlocked the laptop in well under a second, which again was pretty impressive. The webcam though and Windows Hello Face was my preferred choice and again unlocked my machine just by looking at it and did it quickly and accurately even in low light conditions. Across the top is another grill which is used for the HP ProBooks dual speaker setup. In terms of sound quality though, it's what you would expect from a laptop. The speakers favor the high ends of the equalizer and there's really not much bass, but it's a work machine, don't forget, and for Zoom calls with your office, it's absolutely fine. In terms of vocal quality though, it's pretty decent. There's a relatively nice tone to my voice, however, video doesn't quite match that especially in low light conditions. The webcam films at 720p, which is perfectly fine for your meetings with colleagues. So just recording some video on the HP ProBook, just to test what the audio is like when recording through uh, the webcam itself and the microphone quality. There is the dual mic setup. Uh, so hopefully voice doesn't sound too bad, but let's just see how that sounds. There is also a camera which can be found on the bottom right hand side of the laptop which is there so when you're you are in tablet mode you can take pictures rather than just selfies and it's in a decent position and it's unlikely you'll be covering it with a rogue finger the quality though is the same as the conferencing webcam the hp pro book has a 13.3 inch ips panel which is super bright and really sharp colors look fairly accurate thanks to its 90 percent srgb color gamut and watching media on the uh, or from the likes of netflix it's nice and vivid thanks to its ips screen tech but it's not really the laptop for editing photos and videos especially if you're a colorist because of that 72 percent ntsc color gamma rating the hp pro book we were sent is using its own sure view privacy display and when using the HP ProBook people who are not sitting directly in front of the laptop are going to see a dark shroud over the screen. Now this makes sense after all this is a laptop aimed at people who work in offices and people's laptops sometimes have private or restricted information on them. So overall then the HP ProBook X360 435G7 laptop bit of a mouthful that one, is a pretty solid laptop for work and office users. It's a practical workhorse with a decent, sharp, colorful screen and a spec that was able to handle all work applications we threw at it. Having full-sized USB ports on here too is an absolute bonus and will save you spending time faffing around with dongles. Now, if you're after your next laptop for work, then this could definitely be it. So thank you very much for checking out our video of the HP ProBook X360 435G7 laptop. If you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button. Please subscribe to keep up with our latest tech and gaming videos. And also let us know in the comments down below what you think about the HP ProBook. We would love to hear your thoughts. Also, you can find us over on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash technoovo where we stream on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 8.30 p.m. onwards. So if you have a question about tech or want to talk about gaming or just generally want to hang out, come over to Twitch and say hi. We are we have a very, very nice, very small community over on Twitch. So uh, come say hi over there. As I say, thanks very much for watching and we will see you in the next video.